This is the 2022 Chevrolet Tahoe. Is it the best large full-size SUV in the marketplace? We're gonna check it out. Welcome back to the channel, I'm Lauren Fix. This is the 2022 Chevrolet Tahoe, and there are a lot of changes for this year, and we're gonna go through it in 10 different categories, and in the end, we will give you a Car Coach Reports total. If this is your first time here to the channel, we do more than car reviews and first looks and first drives of vehicles, we give you car smarts because knowledge is power. Make sure to subscribe and click that little bell so you don't miss anything. Let's get started with under the hood and the three different engine options. Under the hood of our test vehicle is a 6.2 liter Ecotec 3. It's a V8 engine with 420 horsepower and 460 pound feet of torque, 16 miles to the gallon combined fuel economy. There is also a 5.3 liter V8 with 355 horsepower, 383 pound feet of torque that gets 20 miles to gallon or my favorite, the Duramax 3 liter turbo diesel with 277 horsepower, 460 pound feet of torque, great for towing, 21 miles to the gallon in the city, 28 in the highway, and the curb weight of this monster is 5,473 pounds. One thing to note is that the Tahoe has not changed its driveline options. You have the 5.3 liter, the 6.2 liter, my favorite, the diesel three liter engine. Now, if you're towing, I highly suggest you look at the diesel. You will get longer distance between Phillips. And if you go to the all wheel drive setup, you will lose one mile to the gallon. So one of the things to note is the towing capacity is near the top of the class at 8,400 pounds. This is a three row SUV that allows you to have towing capacity as well as performance. One of the things I like about this vehicle is the fact that when you put your foot in it, you get an instant response and you can hear that engine just roar. And I like that because when you have a lot of people on board and a lot of cargo on board and you're towing something, whether it be a boat, a camper or whatever, you wanna be able to get rolling quickly and this is one of those things that is really important when you're driving a vehicle of this size and hauling that type of cargo. Even though the three engine options are the same, there's a reason they're the same, because they work as stated, and I'm very impressed with that. And for performance, it earns a 10. One other thing to denote when it comes to performance is they've moved the shifter off the column. There's not a shifter in the center. There is only the buttons here. And you know what? You get used to it really quickly. I know a lot of people are used to that column shifter, the shift here, but it just gets in the way. This fits in a nice little space and it's packaged really well. So I'm okay with the shifter being here. I'm not always on every brand, but for the Tahoe, this is a really nice fitment. Now, when you're looking at handling for this vehicle, it is a big vehicle and it feels a bit ominous. There is a magnetic ride performance package on our Tahoe test vehicle. It's about $3,800, but when you change it to the different drive modes, which is a switch on the left, it does change. So it's just a dial. And when you turn that dial to the different drive modes, you've got sport, and then you've got normal, and then you can go into off-road or tow haul mode, and it just keeps circling around. It's important to note that this vehicle is available in rear-wheel drive or all-wheel drive, so you can pick which works for you based on where you live. And this vehicle rides on 22-inch wheels. There are other wheel options other than the one that you're seeing in our test vehicle. I do like how it handles. It has great control and connectivity to the road. It just feels bigger, and I know that GM has come up with ways to make the vehicle feel to the consumer, to the driver, like it's less larger than it is. And I think they're working on that as they make upgrades. Remember, this is a mid-cycle refresh. This is not a complete redesign. It's easy to get in and out of parking spaces, which is important to your daily drive. When it comes to handling for this vehicle, it does as it states, and it is an excellent competitive vehicle in this category. And if you're thinking about a full-size three-row SUV, you absolutely need to test drive the Tahoe. There is great value in that, and we're gonna talk about that at the end when we talk about value and cargo compared to its competition, which would be Ford and Nissan and Toyota. I mean, everyone's got something in this category these days. We're hearing even the Germans are starting to get into this larger three-row category because they realize there is a demand. That is a very important factor when it comes to handling this vehicle earns a nine. When it comes to safety, Chevy has a standard safety package, which includes automatic emergency braking, front pedestrian braking, forward collision alert, 
lane keep assist and lane departure warning. Now the front and rear brake assist and more come standard with the safety package, including the teen driving and a little button you can press to make sure that everyone's buckled up before you take off. Those are all very important features. In addition, there's an optional luxury package that includes rear pedestrian alert, rear cross traffic alert and lane change alert with side blind spot alert zones. Now, I think that should be standard. I think all safety in a big vehicle like this should be standard. So instead of giving it a 10, because it does have it available, I'm giving it a nine because it's missing the safety features as standard and you have to buy up, which can get a little bit pricey. For safety, it earns a nine. When it comes to visibility, this is a very large vehicle and having the ability to see where you're going is obviously part of safety. Good sized piece of glass in the front, nice sill levels here for your arm to rest on. And you may laugh at that means something with visibility, it does. If you're trying to park a vehicle, you wanna be able to see where it's going on down there, not just with your eyes, but also with that around view camera that comes with this vehicle. Now there is no rear view mirror that turns into a camera. Unfortunately, it is available on a lot of other General Motors products. I really like the backup mirror. It's not available on our test vehicle. Now, one of the things that's important, yes, you get to use your eyes and your mirrors, and the backup camera, but when you turn around, there are some good size blind spots between the second and third row, and then also back there between the third row and the back. Now, you have no choice. It's a good size vehicle, and it needs to have all this strength, so you can't have all glass. So it's important to note that. Now, when you're looking at visibility as a whole, the fact there's a really high definition around view camera, which is important. There's also a lot of adjustments for that, which include for backup camera, forward camera, and also backing up to a trailer. Excellent and very well done. And for visibility, this vehicle earns a nine. This vehicle seats seven or eight people, depending upon how you purchase the combination. With second row captain's chairs, that becomes seven. If you go with bench seats, it becomes eight. Again, that depends on the trim level, whether you're buying the entry level or the top line trim levels will make a difference on what's available. So it's important to check that out before you make your decision. Now, as far as the front seats are concerned, there is three stage heated and ventilated seats as well as a heated steering wheel and that's really important. Now it's also important to know there's lumbar on both sides. Thank you very much General Motors. This is an important factor to have. Let's take a look at the second and the third row and we'll give it a rating. The second row, this is the place to be with two 12.6 inch entertainment screens, wireless headsets, and two charging ports plus a regular wall outlet, HDMI so you can connect in your own connectivity, heated seats, climate control, cup holders, you pretty much have it all in the second row, including armrests for this captain's chair. Heading back to the third row, this is where there's a little bit less space. It is a bit tight for those that are tall. I'm 5'8", so the second row has a ton of space, and these seats do fold down really easily, or you can climb up the middle. If you're long-legged, sit in the middle. If not, the two sides would be good for someone who's not so long in the legs. There's also two cup holders here and USB-C connections. There's also ventilation and lighting, and they've done a nice job putting this all together. There's a few things that are missing, and the second row is a bit flat and uncomfortable in comparison to the front row, of course, and the third row is pretty much a bench seat that folds 60-40. When it comes to seating for this vehicle, it earns an eight. When you're looking at technology for this vehicle, you've got a 10.2 inch HD screen, which you can see has Google Maps, which is great. You can also get your trailer package in here. You can start your light test and it'll go through all the different features and everything you need. Over here, you can pair your cell phone. You have your audio system, depending upon what you want, AM, FM, Sirius XM, Bluetooth, Google News, or your podcast right here. Very, very nice to have. In addition, you can have your Google Maps split with your audio system. Again, pick what you want, makes it really easy to use. They've done a nice job thinking about what people are using this for, and that makes life pretty easy. So there's your Google Assistant right there. They've really thought about everything on technology. There's also a head-up display, which I do appreciate. Moving over to your center screen, you have a lot of great information available to you. You can change your layout, your gauges, and your information on the left and right side, or your information pages all right here. And a lot of this stuff goes into safety, which we covered. But the idea is that all of this can be set up the way you want. And I think people appreciate that. They've thought about the technology 
and how easy it is for people to use. You can change all this information right here in front of you. And this keeps your eyes on the road and your hands on the wheel. When you're looking at technology for this vehicle, it also has a nine speaker Bose audio system, wireless charging, wireless Android Auto and Apple CarPlay, plus those 12.6 inch touchscreens in back that rear seat entertainment's just shy of $2,000 and the head up display. For technology, this vehicle earns an eight. When it comes to features for this vehicle, there is a lot, including remote start and OnStar. On the left side, you can adjust your cruise control, your heated seats, and your, some of your collision information, or the avoidance thereof. On the right side, it allows you to change that screen in front of you, which is what we showed you in technology, as well as voice commands. On the left side, you have a little bit of a cumbersome way to access everything on one stock. So you have to actually reach in and turn the dial here or here, depending on what you want. Your squirters are at the end. Obviously, the turn signal is normal and the headlights are down on a different button. There is nothing on the right side. Going further down from your ventilation, you've got your vent here, and this is where a lot of your controls are, including your lane departure warning, trash control, your 360 degree camera, and your charging for electricity. Also, you've got your towing modes here. You can change your different drive modes, which is really great. So you can go into sport, off-road, tow haul, or normal is right there. And of course, you've got your controls for your headlights. On the door, you have two memory seat settings, your normal window lifts, the front two are automatic, and your mirror adjustments. Heading over to the center, we have that shifter we described earlier in performance and handling, and your adjustments. That nice 10.25 inch screen, some additional hidden storage over here, which is nice. Your emergency flashers, your vents, and then further down, you have real dials, which I really appreciate for changing stations and volume. Your climate control, which you have here, is nothing out of the normal, but there is heated seats, and that is appreciated. Ventilated seats are optional and not on this trim level. You also have tons of charging. USB here, regular outlet, and wireless charging. Very nicely done. Further back, you have two cup holders. Your center console is here. Huge center console, got some extra masks here just in case you need them these days. And then up top in this overhead console, you have some additional controls. And this I like, this is for your garage door opener and the ability to adjust the height of that tailgate because we all have different things that we want and how we want it. And you can also put the seats down really nicely done. When it comes to features for this vehicle, our test vehicle does not have a sunroof. However, there are quite a few nice features. 10 exterior colors, two interior colors. Trim levels are High Country, Premier, Z71, RST, which is our test vehicle, LT and LS. Cloth or leather upholstery is optional, and Sirius XM with 360L is part of that satellite package. But overall, for features, this vehicle earns an 8. When it comes to the design of the new Tahoe, there are some changes. I do like the front end and the fact that they've kind of limited the chrome and made it more classy and modern. LED headlights and LED taillights make your visibility bright and for people to be able to see you. Further down, there are optional tow hooks as well. Not every truck offers tow hooks, but if you want them, you can get them on the Chevy Tahoe. I do like this overall look and the very muscular hood. Our vehicle rides on painted black and alloy wheels that are 22 inches. These are Bridgestone all-season tires. If you're really looking for the best traction and you live in snowy conditions, you'll want to look at winter tires. It does not feel up the wheelhouse as much as I would like. That's something that I think that really needs to create that look of cohesiveness is to fill up bigger wheels into the wheelhouse or have the ability for that chassis to ride down a little bit lower. Again, it depends what you're doing with this as far as a daily driver that would be totally fine. If you're looking for something more performance oriented, typically you want less space in the wheelhouse. I do like the black Tahoe logo and the black running boards that are matte. They get dirty easily. And so this is something when they're matte black, it hides the dirt. 
I do like that. Very wise. The mirrors are a good size if you're going to be trailer towing. You may need extensions. There are cameras on the side, which is great for visibility, like we discussed in visibility. I do like the black and the roof rails. I think that's really helpful when you have a lot of people in the car and a lot of gear. You can put your skis up there or whatever else you need. So it's thought about who's using this car. When you're hauling seven or eight people, you want to be able to have a place for extra cargo for sure. One of the things to note is this large piece of metal that blocks some of the visibility for the driver and also blocks some of the visibility for the third row passenger. Coming around to the back on this upper airfoil, they did one of the smartest things I've seen as they tuck the wiper blade up underneath behind that third brake light. Very smart because those wiper blades are expensive. They're short. They're not very popular like the front blades. So it's a great way to protect the back and create this nice clean look. Cadillac was the first to offer that. I thought it was pretty smart. And I'm seeing other brands starting to follow that design trend. So well done for Chevrolet. I like the LED tail lights. I like how they're clear over the top and you can see that Chevrolet logo. Then across the back, you've got like a blackout chrome, the black Chevy logo, and the Tahoe in black. This is the RST trim level, which is the middle of the trim levels, and there are six total. So this is one of the middle ones, RST, with the optional larger engine. You've got the dual exhaust here, which are really nice and make the sound of the exhaust sound pretty darn good. So they've done a nice job hiding that class three hitch behind this cover is also making it look nice and clean. Overall, they did a great job with this vehicle. It's also important to note that you can get a power or manual lift gate. I would suggest the power lift gate. It does get a little bit on the heavy side and this would make it a lot easier for you. But overall, for the design of this vehicle, it is quite impressive and it deserves a nine. When it comes to quality of this vehicle, there are a lot of hard surfaces and I wish some of them just felt more natural material. And in that case, also the build quality is excellent. You get a three year, 36,000 mile warranty and a five year, 60,000 mile powertrain warranty, which is excellent. There is no maintenance included other than your first visitation to your dealer. But after that, the expense is on you. A lot of the competitors are starting to include that as part of their price. And that's important to note. Also, you wanna check your insurance rates before you make a decision on quality. But overall for quality on this vehicle, it earns an eight. Coming around to the back, you get 25.5 cubic feet of storage. Fold down that third row and with the third row folded, you now have 73 cubic feet of storage. Fold down the second row and you have a huge storage of over 125 cubic feet of storage. That is one of the largest in the segment. There is a low lift over and it goes completely flat, which is really great for when you have to haul things. In addition, the seats are power so you can get them back up quite simply. This is great at this price point. This is pretty darn impressive and the seats move quickly. 60, 40 split and back, pretty impressive. When you're looking at the value of this vehicle, it starts at $49,000. Well, you start adding it up, you get into this RST trim level, which is where the goodies start. And this vehicle came in at $72,000. It did not have a sunroof, but it also had a $50 credit for removing that start-stop technology, which I wouldn't put on anyhow. And there's $50 also credited for the locking column. Again, these are things that are not necessary, but saving $100, that is pretty good. And you probably don't want to have those items anyhow, unless you really want that start stop technology. Now, when you compare this vehicle to the other vehicles in the category, some of them get pretty pricey, especially when you add the Germans in here and some of the Japanese brands, they can add up pretty quickly. This vehicle coming in at $72,000 was quite impressive. And for value, it earns a nine. When you add up all 10 categories, I was really impressed with the powerful engine, the technology that's included with this vehicle, and some of it can get kind of expensive once you start adding in the things that you kind of want. And that's really important to note. Now on the negative side, I wish that the build quality was a little bit better as far as touch materials and things you use, but I am super impressed with the entertainment screen on the second row and the comfort all the way across this vehicle is well thought out and an improvement over the previous generation. When you compare this vehicle to the Ford Expedition or the Sequoia, you know, you start thinking this is a pretty good value vehicle and you do get a lot of money and this is why they sell a lot of Tahoes. This is a very popular item, but is this the best vehicle in the category? 
Well, it's really hard to make that determination because it depends on a lot of other factors that might impact you, including the budget and the insurance. So I'll let you answer that question in the comments down below. And if I didn't answer your questions, you can also put your questions on there and I will answer it. When you total up all 10 categories, the car coach reports total for the 2022 Chevrolet Tahoe, our RST test vehicle came in at 87, which is pretty darn good. We have additional reviews on this vehicle on our website, carcoachreports.com. Content is in English and in Spanish. Check out our podcast, Total Car Score, available on all platforms. We talk to some internals about these vehicles. And follow me on all forms of social media, at Lauren Fix. If you got value from this video, make sure to like and share it and subscribe for more videos like this one. Thank you so much for watching, and we'll look forward to seeing you next time.